Welcome everybody to um, a short video podcast of the anatomy of the posterior triangle of the neck. Um, today I'm going to be using some body paints to paint Dr. Webster here, um, showing the boundaries of the posterior triangle of the neck and some of the um, important nerves and blood vessels that are involved. Okie dokie, so today we're going to be starting with the boundaries of the posterior triangle of the neck. So the anterior boundary is um, a big chunk of muscle that we see, it's called the sternocleidomastoid, okay? Now it's got two heads and one is on the sternum and one is on the clavicle, okay? And they both come up and insert on the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So if Dr. Webster here, we can see this boundary. Has that come up? Yeah, I think. Come all the way up here. It's quite a big muscle. If you turn your head towards me, and now away from me, there, that's where you can see it come straight out there. Okay, so that's the anterior border of this triangle. The posterior border is another big muscle that comes back, and it comes back a bit like this, okay? It's called the trapezius muscle. It's got the same insertion up here, and then it's a big sheet-like muscle, and it actually comes all the way to the back, and then all the way down in a kind of triangle. But we won't worry about that now because we're just looking at the neck. Okay, so that's the posterior border. Um, the base of the triangle is actually the clavicle. It's a bone, okay? So if we that can works. see that... Ooh. Good shoulder. You can see that. That's the clavicle there. Okay. So this now, the trapezius, we can draw the rest of it so it's coming down there, okay? The clavicle comes along there. Brilliant. So this is the posterior triangle of the neck. Right, now the posterior triangle of the neck does divide. A muscle that comes from the hyoid to the scapula comes through and divides this triangle into two. Okay, so the muscle is called the omohyoid. It's the inferior belly of the omohyoid that we can see in the posterior triangle. Um, and it divides this triangle into two triangles. The occipital, this one here that I'm pointing at, and the sub, uh, supraclip clavicular, sorry, the supraclavicular triangle, sometimes called the subclavian triangle as well. Okay, um, the other thing we need to talk about is the uh, spinal accessory nerve and the subclavian nerve. change artery. paint colours? Yes, yeah. I thought so. Right, okay, so if we look at the course of the um, spinal accessory nerve, we take it just above halfway down the sternocleidomastoid, okay, and it runs in a posterior fashion. It comes through the sternocleidomastoid, and runs posteriorly in the posterior uh, triangle of the neck through and hits the trapezius where it also innervates the trapezius muscle. So it innervates the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius. Now why it's important to know about this nerve in this region of the neck is because it's very um, superficial and it isn't protected by anything. It's the most commonly damaged nerve um, if you have trauma to the neck in this area. So if you were to do the chop like that, you'd end up with damage to your spinal accessory nerve and Sam wouldn't be able to shrug his shoulders or move his head. Very well. Right. Fact. The other important um, vessel we need to talk about here is the subclavian artery, okay? Because the subclavian artery comes up just at the base of the supraclavicular triangle, okay? So it comes up just here, and it's actually the third part of the subclavian triangle that we're interested in that's involved in this triangle, okay? And that's important, obviously, because it's a major blood vessel. All right. Do I look good in blue? Oh, <laughs>